What is going on? It's Josiah back again. Wanted to talk about something that uh, has popped up on my radar, a question that has been popping up a lot because things are starting to get back to normal. And I say normal with quotes uh, because right now we're in the midst of transitioning back into a new normal. And this new normal does include in some parts of the country and the world actually, gyms being reopened. And so for the past few months, we have experienced mostly home workouts or maybe not working out at all. And I wanna to talk today about how to get back into lifting weights after a break from the gym. If you've been at home with just your body weight or maybe a few exercise bands laying around, a couple stragglers of dumbbells laying around, whatever the case may be, today's video is gonna break down exactly how to transition back into a weightlifting workout routine that it has a full gym or at least more equipment than what you've been able to access over the past few months. I'm gonna talk about three main things that will allow you to transition both safely and effectively back to a workout routine. So let's jump into it. First things first, number one, your main goal when getting back to the gym is a couple different things. We're gonna talk about a couple different goals that you should have top of mind as you transition back to working out in a gym atmosphere or just with more equipment, whatever the case may be. Safety is number one. You don't wanna rush back into doing things that your body has not done in quite some time. Three months is actually a long time. If you don't have your mobility, you don't have the flexibility, if you don't have the muscle memory to jump right back into more advanced lifts like deadlifts or power cleans or hang cleans or kettlebells and all this other stuff that you maybe haven't done, in a while, it will be very easy to get hurt if you don't transition back safely and slowly. Now, when I say slowly, I don't mean that it's gonna take months to get back to where you were before, but hey, give yourself a few weeks to transition safely back into the gym. The other goals you should have is to train and not get super sore. So how do we do that? Well, we're not gonna rush back into doing crazy heavy weights, tons of sets, tons of reps. I know it can be tempting if you've been just dying to get back to the gym, it can be very tempting to rush back in and do 100 sets of squats, bench press, push-ups, all this stuff, super sets with kettlebells and all the machines and everything. I totally get it. I've been there, done that. What ends up happening is that you're going to experience quite a bit of soreness, which can disrupt your momentum, right? You just get back and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I'm so sore. I can't get back to the gym for a few days. So we wanna train with a minimal dose. We run, we wanna do low volume. We can mix up our reps a little bit. You know, you can do low reps. I like to stick to moderate reps when you're just getting back in. So eight to 12, somewhere in that range, just to feel the muscle working, get that mind-muscle connection back. The third goal should be to get your form dialed in on all your exercises. So safety, minimal soreness, and form. Those are the three main goals that you should have. That's step number one. How do we do this? How do we effectively transition? Well, think about the workout routine you were doing in the gym before. An easy way to transition back into a workout routine in the gym is to just cut your volume down in half, okay? So if you were doing four or five sets of everything, well, guess what? Now you're doing two or three sets of everything. That's totally cool. Cut the weights in half. Build it back up. If you were squatting 400 before or 300 or 200 or whatever, just cut it in half. Low volume. Volume is simply sets times reps with weight, okay? So we take our weight times how many reps times how many sets, and that's how much volume that you do. So let's just say, for example, normally you were squatting 200 pounds for 10 reps for four sets, okay? So you would take 200 times 10, that's 2,000, times that by four, that's 8,000 pounds. That was your old volume. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that in half. We're gonna shoot for about 4,000 in total volume. You don't need to be a mathematician, just in your head think about what was I doing before? Let me cut that in half. That's how we're gonna transition back. The other thing we can do is we can up our frequency of training. Now you might be thinking, doesn't that go against what you just said? We're gonna cut our volume way back. What we can do is we can spread out our normal workouts over full body workouts maybe. So maybe if we're doing upper and lower body workouts or push pull legs, or chest and triceps on Monday, back and biceps, shoulders, whatever. We can now say, okay, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're gonna do full body. We're gonna train everything with a couple sets. A couple sets for arms, couple sets for legs, couple sets for hamstrings, couple sets for back. Call it a day, come back in a day or two, do it again. Keeping the intensity low, keeping the volume low. This is going to help your body get back into the swing of things. It's going to improve your body's ability to regain the muscle that might've been lost, regain some strength, 
and not run into that severe soreness or that DOMS, right? The delayed onset muscle soreness, which you know what I'm talking about. You wake up three days after training legs and you can barely walk. We don't want to do that. If you are lucky enough to be able to access the gym or if you're watching this down the road and your gym is now open and you've been doing body weight stuff for however long or maybe you haven't been training at all, just keep in mind that your body will have what's called muscle memory. Once you get back into the swing of things, you will start to see muscle come back faster than before, right? So it's gonna be faster than someone who's never built muscle before. If you've built it and maybe you lost a little bit of size, you come back all of a sudden, boom. I experienced this with my torn bicep. I tore my bicep a year ago. Within two weeks of not training my bicep and having it in a cast, my arm shrunk dramatically. It was like half the size of my other one. I was devastated for a little bit, but then soon as I started to get back into the gym and just training with bands, right? I wasn't doing anything heavy with my torn arm. Just getting blood into that area again and getting a little bit of a pump, my arm started to dramatically grow like very, very fast. And you can't really see if you're listening on the podcast, but if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that my arms are about the same size now. The muscle will come back. You wanna train just enough when you're just getting back into train just to stimulate what's called protein synthesis. And that is just where you have a little bit of a breakdown inside the body of muscle tissue that needs to be rebuilt. Your body signals the body to rebuild muscle, uses protein that you eat, that's stored in the body, to rebuild that muscle. That's protein synthesis. So you just wanna train just enough to get that synthesis process started. What do we need to do that? Well, about 50% of our one rep max on most exercises. So if you can curl 50 pounds, well, guess what? You only have to do about 25 pound curls. If you can bench press 400 pounds, you really only have to do about 200 pounds to stimulate some muscle growth. That's where we start. Now, of course, we wanna bring that intensity up over time. So week by week, we can add a little bit of weight. We can add a few reps, a few sets here and there. Before you know it, a month in, you're back to your normal routine. I don't want you to think about this as something that is going to suck, right? Getting back into the gym. What will suck more than getting back to the gym is when you, if you get back to the gym and you hurt yourself, right? Injuries are the worst. That'll derail progress, set you back a long time. Trust me, I speak from experience. I would hate for anybody to get back into the gym just to get hurt, right? And then can't work out at home. You're like, my shoulder's killing me. My knees are killing me. My lower back got hurt. I pulled a muscle, blah, 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 blah. You know the story, right? It's never fun. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. We also want to make sure, and, I'll, and I'm going to wrap up this episode on how to get back into the gym with a couple reminders about safety, all right? And I'm not talking about lifting safely. We've talked about that already, perfecting your form, feeling the muscle work, slowing your reps down, lowering the weight. All that stuff is important. I wanna to talk to you about safety and cleanliness, okay? This goes for any time, not just when we have a pandemic, not just when we have a virus. Let's use this time to be better when it comes to our hygiene. Okay, and not just our hygiene with ourselves, but other people, like helping keep the gym clean. Take this time to reestablish good habits. Wipe down the equipment before and after use, all right? That is something we should do all the time. Why would you wanna get on dirty equipment anyway? If you're in one of those, hard, in a hardcore gym that doesn't care, that just throws chalk everywhere and all that stuff, great. I love the hardcore atmosphere, but there's nothing wrong with being clean and hardcore. Nothing wrong with that at all. So be aware that there are other people who wanna use the gym. Take your time to clean the equipment. Put the equipment away. Don't leave sweaty benches, sweaty dumbbells, sweaty barbells laying around. Put your stuff away. Be better. Get, take this opportunity to hit the refresh button and be the example, all right? Be the person who leads the charge in the gym of being aware of your surroundings, staying a part of that's what the gym requires, being polite, being pleasant, having a smile on your face, and enjoying the opportunity to get back in the gym. Because I'll tell you what, not everybody's allowed to get back in the gym. Gyms aren't open everywhere yet. And I don't know when you're watching this, but if you're watching this down the road, heck, we might have gyms closed, reopened, closed again. Who knows? It's a blessing, all right, to be able to work out. And I know sometimes it gets lost in the sauce, if you will, that we get out there and you know it's like, oh, I gotta go to the gym. We start complaining and blah, blah, blah. You get to go to the gym. Change your language. I have to go to the gym. Oh my gosh, I have to lose weight. No, you get to lose weight. You get to go to the gym. That is a blessing, my friend. Do not take it for granted. Use this opportunity to be a better freaking person. 
a clean person, someone who has good hygiene. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face after you just touched eight, eight different dumbbells and barbells. Clean the damn machines. Be polite. Don't get annoyed if someone's on a machine and you can't be near them because you're six feet apart and all this other stuff. If you're worried about the virus or you're worried about getting sick, don't go back to the gym then. If that's something that's going to stress you out too much, don't feel the pressure of society or your friends who are going back. If you're someone who's going back and some of your friends are like, oh, I'm too scared to go back, don't give them a hard time. Be a better human being. Have some damn common sense for once. I see so many people out there talking about, oh, gym should be open, it's not safe. And some people talking about, gym should have never been closed. I'm not the person who's gonna tell you what's right and what's wrong here. What I'm gonna tell you is that everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it factual, but now that you're getting an opportunity to go back to the gym, understand that there are gonna be some sensitive people that don't wanna go back, and that's okay. And then there's gonna be people who are just like, up everyone's ass, not giving personal space, be polite, be calm. Handle things professionally. Be the example that others need to see so that they can feel more comfortable in the gym. I'm gonna wrap this up with my personal recommendation for a training program. Pick four or five, six different exercises, cover the whole body. Let's call one for chest, one for shoulders, one, one or two for back, arms, core, uh, and legs. So six to maybe eight exercises, okay? Six to eight exercises. Hit those exercises every other day, two sets eight to 12 reps, okay? Start with that. You can mix it up, you could do deadlifts to start one day, squats to start another, bench press to start another day, whatever. But just have your key six to eight exercises that you kind of rotate through. If you're already in our coaching programs, you have a program, yay, you're gonna get a program, you're rocking. Stick to that, okay? If you wanna transition back to workouts in the gym, you just let me and my team know. If you're watching this somewhere else and you're not on the team yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Get on the team. Anyways, in all seriousness, if you have any questions, if you need anything from me, leave a comment on this video. Enjoy it. Get back to the gym if you can, if you want to. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Do your best. Stay active. Stay aware of your movement and get after it wherever you are. Until next time, Josiah Novak, thetruetransformation.com. Talk to you soon. Peace.